<laughs> well, welcome. It's Cocktails with Claws, and we're at Maiden Lane Wine and Spirits 494 Pulitzer here in downtown Windsor. And we're with Mark. Mark, I've got a situation. Let's hear it, Santa. I am hosting the colleagues, you know, Father Time, Mother Nature, Whoa. Tooth Fairy, all of them, Easter Bunny, you name it. <laughs> they're, they're all showing up on Boxing Day. I need, I need to impress them. Like, all they think I could do is make macaroni and cheese out of a box. <laughs> Help me, please. No problem, Santa. We're going to teach you how to throw together a nice slick uh, charcuterie board and maybe a couple drinks to go along with it. Wonderful. Show us. All right. So we're going to slice some meat. Mm -hmm. Here at Maiden Lane, we like to keep our boards pretty minimal and stylish and sleek. So we don't overdo it with uh, filler. It's just meat, cheese, some, some pickles, some nice condiments to go along with it. This is very straightforward so far. It's extremely straightforward. Anybody can do this. Yeah. So you're just demystifying this whole idea of the charcuterie board. So basically, Absolutely. tell us about these different sausages that, that you're putting down. Okay, uh, this one here is called a casulinga sausage. Mm -hmm. Italian sausage, and this one is also an Italian sausage called cacciatore. This one here that we're doing is a whole muscle, not a sausage, and it is called copa. And copa is kind of like a rustic style capicola. Oh, hi. So now that that's done, we got our meats. Now I've already put some, some little pickles, and they call it sweetie drops on top. These little nice Peruvian red peppers. Mm. Okay, so the whole idea of a charcuterie board mm -hmm. should be balancing flavors? You need to balance flavors and you need to put stuff that goes well together. Uh, and a little nibble of everything. So what's nice about uh, a charcuterie board is everybody gets a little taste of everything and, and uh, there's lots to choose from. Our first cheese is called a handback cheese. It's from uh, uh, Northern Ontario. And it's kind of reminiscent of a Gouda style cheese. Oh, so it's a nice creamy flavor. Absolutely. A little creamy, a little bit nutty. Mm -hmm. um, it goes very well with a nice glass of red wine. And our second cheese is a two-year aged cheddar. Mm. We like putting that cheddar on, on the board because it seems everyone loves cheddar. Honey goes extremely well with cheese. Oh. So we use a little bit of local honeycomb. Oh, that is beautiful. Right. So now, for, for people that are not familiar with honeycomb, mm -hmm. so the honey is stored in the beeswax cells. That's right. Now, do you eat the beeswax and the honey, or just it, the honey only? It is totally edible. I eat it. Um, it's also funny is it, it, the, when you bite it, the honey kind of just bursts out. Then you get to chew on it a little bit, right? And you have a little piece of cheese, and it tastes really great. So it's almost like total natural candy. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Then... Oh, the mustard. We use a little grainy mustard. Oh, my. And we, use, we like using two spoons and making just a small canal shape. Spoon, just by twisting your spoons back and forth. Oh, look and at that. And it nicely right there. So far, I... I feel confident that, that I could do this. I'm pretty sure you could, Santa. Pretty sure you can. A little knife on the board like that. And there you have it. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, so, and this could be an, an appetizer. That's right. It well, if you kind of go overboard, it could become most of the evening. Absolutely. You could fill them up and make it look, you know, nice and big and full and, and, and just graze all night. But what a welcoming, what a welcoming tray to, just to see as, as you bring guests in. Yeah, ab absolutely. I'd be happy with that. Okay, so now, what what can I do to give a libation with this? What do you recommend? I recommend with, with our boards a nice glass of wine. Uh, but we also do some pretty cool cocktails here at Main Lane that, that will go pretty excellent with that. And I'd like to show you a couple. Great, please. All right, so to go with the board, mm -hmm. I need something that, I, that will impress, that feels seasonal, and that I can make while still being with the colleagues. No problem. 
This one I call the Kris Kringle. Named it after you. <laughs> Wonderful. So what we start off with is one and a half ounces of Gosling Black Rum. Oh my goodness. So Black Rum versus Dark Rum versus Spiced Rum. Mm -hmm. Can you just help clarify for us the uh, rum novices? Barrel aging, the longer it's been in a barrel, the darker it gets. That's where it gets its color from, is from being in a barrel. Uh, spice rum, obviously it has some spices added to it. This one does not. Uh, and yeah, white rum just goes from being manufactured and distilled right into the bottle. So there's no aging to it, and that's why it's white. Wonderful. Yeah. Next, we put in a egg white. Oh. This is going to allow this drink to be nice and frothy, and you won't taste the egg. People think they'll taste the egg, but it's mostly just for consistency. Hmm. Then we're going to add about five ounces of eggnog. Oh. I know you like eggnog. Oh, how seasonal lovely. Then we're going to add just a few drops, and I like to do it at the end of my bar spoon just so I don't spill too much into it. Mm -hmm. And this is orange blossom water. Oh my goodness. So if, can, can we find this in this local grocery Any store? Any grocery store should have your orange blossom water. What we're going to do now is called a dry shake. And what dry shake is, is we don't put any ice in our tins. We just use it dry. And we shake it up like this. And what that's going to do it's going to give a really big froth and make it nice and uh, nice and heady and frothy on top. Okay. Nice and foamy. Texture. So I'm going to shake this for what I do, Santa, is I sing happy birthday to myself twice in my head. Oh. That's how I know I'm done shaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So basically 20 seconds. Yeah. Smack it. And I'm going to add my ice. Shake it again. This drink is kind of different because it doesn't use any ice in the glass at all. Oh. Why I put the ice in the glass to begin with was just to cool the glass down and make sure it's nice and cold. So could we even put the, the glass in, into the freezer? In Absolutely. It'd be the best way to do it. Okay. Now, put the strainer over top and I'm going to go almost to the top, or to the middle. Okay. And then I'm going to take some soda and carefully pour a little bit in while I'm doing this. Oh a lot of people don't like eggnog because it's thick, it's a little heavier. Once you add the soda, it really lightens everything up, it makes it very refreshing. So now we just let it kind of sit there for a bit, mm -hmm. everything settles down, and then we finish. It should be nice and foamy, then we're going to finish it with a little shaving of cinnamon. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at that. All right, and of course, you ginger snap cookies <laughs> and cheers oh mark you are always on the nice list <laughs> oh thank you oh, well here we have it charcuterie board a cocktail for the season you know what if you don't even want to do this at home calm down from the main, main lane wines and spirits and mark will take care of you I'm bringing the colleagues in. <laughs> That's it. We can, we're just going to come and come here. Thank Great you, atmosphere, wonderful drinks, beautiful food. Beautiful. Thank oh, you, oh, 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 Merry Christmas and happy Merry holidays, Christmas. everyone. Oh, 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 oh.